why? I think that it's a conscious choice on my, my part that so much as it chooses you because there's no precedent of anybody in my family and you know looking at my family photo albums it goes back to I made uh, theatres out of shoeboxes when I was seven years old and then went to glove puppets and then that transmuted into making marionettes and string puppets with Pelham puppets that I got every Christmas and birthday in a theatre in my parents' garage and did school plays and amateur plays at the Swaziland Theatre Club. So it was an absolute through, li through line. But I, I didn't know that I could actually earn a living considering where I grew up doing it. So I'm just grateful that it's worked out. I'd been an actor in England, in London, for four years with an agent that had never got me to meet a casting director. So the level at which I was working was fringe theatre and touring productions. And the moment that I got a new agent, the first thing he said was, which casting directors have you met? And I didn't even know about them. And he said, well, you have to go and meet Mary Selway first. Um, and I did, and I got cast by her in Withnell and I, 33 years ago, which completely changed my life. So I can't tell you enough how radical and important that was, that meeting. So. And every subsequent casting director I've met who's given me a job, um, I owe that because their faith is of a different nature to an agent who's always, you know, looking everywhere. Whereas if you find a casting director that believes in you, it's, to me, that's like gold dust. Yeah, never give up. Never give up. I was out of work for nine months in 1985, and your self-esteem is absolutely decimated because if somebody says, well, what do you do? And you say, well, I'm an actor. And they say, well, what, what have you been in? And you can't say anything. Your self-esteem is so index-linked to whether you're working or not. So, you know, I really understand what that's like and how lucky breaks are that you get. And that in my situation, if Daniel DeLewis had taken the role of Withner in 1986, I wouldn't be standing talking to you now. I, I know that. So that is luck and happenstance. The exact same way that this movie that I've just done, that's been so you know, nominated and awarded, Can You Ever Forgive Me? Jen Houston, uh, American casting director, put me in front of Mariel Heller, who directed the film. But in turn, eight years ago, Sam Rockwell was cast in my part. The film never happened. Three years ago, Chris O'Dowd was cast in my part. That film never happened. So again, it's like happenstance and luck that I happen to be in the third incarnation of the film that actually got made. And the fact that this had all these awards heat as a result of it is something that you know I had no anticipation of and that's not the reason why you do it or go into it. So keep at it, that's what I say. You know, never give up. Yeah, I get nervous all the time. It gets slightly less, I don't want to be disingenuous about it, but it, that never goes away and every time you get a new job it's literally going to complete panic of thinking, how do I do this? Where, you know, where, where do you begin? But I accept now at my vast vintage that that is, that is just the way that it happens. And I, most actors I know have that same feeling. It always seems like everybody else knows how to do their job or play their part. You look at them and you think, my God, I can, if I was playing that part, I'd know how to do it. But when it's your own, you know, all your fear and insecurity just comes, comes to bear. But I suppose from that, it motors you into, into doing something. Uh, trust your instincts. If you feel that you're being put into something that's really uncomfortable, try and take a deep breath and have the courage to say, I won't do that. Um, please don't ask me to do that. You always have, I think the right as a human being just to say, no, I won't do that. And now with the Me Too movement, I think that's, and the post Weinstein watershed has made that easier for people to do. But I think it's still difficult because, you know, you're told accept less money or accept these conditions or just, you know, put up with the stuff because if you don't, you'll never work again or there's a kind of implied threat in, some, in things that happen. And I know actors have to face that all the time in, at some level.